Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you may be in the world. Welcome in, welcome back. My name is Brooke, aka Brooks Moon, and I hope you're doing okay. This is so fun. I love this so much more. I feel like a newscaster and it's really slay. This was in honor of Halloween, so happy Halloween and happy spooky month. I'm filming this at night because I wanted to film this a lot earlier in the day, but then the script took me 14 million years to finish. Today, we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane, at least for me. It's a trip down memory lane, and the year is 2016. It was a wild year for the world, specifically in America as well, because it was an election year. But also, if you were a 15-year-old girl on the internet who had a fandom account, it was a very interesting time to exist in that space. I am actually going to specifically be talking about the It and Stranger Things fandoms and how they crossed over and took over the fandom space by storm. It was everywhere. They were all over the place across every single platform. It was a little ridiculous. But also, I just want to give like a like a little warning, I guess. The pieces of media that I'm going to be talking about, there are some people connected to them that are not great people and they just kind of suck. This is not me promoting them at all. I don't want it to come off as that because that's not the intention of this video. The intention of this video and the point of this video is to go through the nostalgic atmosphere, I guess is the best way to say it, that I experienced as a teenager that I kind of look fondly at because not because of the content I was consuming, but the people and the community that was around it. I do not take this as me condoning their actions because I don't. I don't agree with their views and it will always and forever be Free Palestine. And there are actually some links in my description, they have been in every single video, that you can check out to learn more and to help and all of that. I wanted to give it, get that out there because it's hard to talk about certain things and not come off as promoting it. This is solely for nostalgic reasons. If it offends you, I'm sorry, just don't watch it. I think that's like the nicest way I can say that. Anyone who may have experienced this or is curious as to what the hell this was, I hope you enjoy this video. I feel like there was a pipeline from um, the multi-fandom book girly that like worshipped that one symbol to the it stranger things crossover fandom is like very common i can't be the only one and also bonus points if during this period this transition period from one to the other and also during the it and stranger things period you were going through your emo phase um you and i lived the same life I hate to break it to you, we, there is no such thing as a unique experience. You and I are the same person. We're twins, actually. We share the same brain and the same brain cells. Congratulations, you now live in my head. I hope you like it in here. It's kind of chaotic. I feel like every video on this channel is just a reflection of how mentally ill I am. Let's get into this because we are going through the timeline and we're going to be talking about some key significant moments of all of this and I'm just gonna lay it all out for you. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're like, what the f is this bitch on right now? Have no fear because I'm going to explain to you how this even became a thing and why. But before we even get into the timeline and all of that, I'm going to explain what this fandom was and why it existed in the first place. It and Stranger Things fandom rose to like its height and peak around 2017, 2018. It continued for for like a year or so. It like started 2016, rose to its like peak in 2017, 2018. 2019, it had a little another like spike and then it just started to dwindle down. You might be thinking, you may be wondering, what the hell would cause these two pieces of media to cross over? And it's a few things, but the main thing, the, the nucleus, the connection between all of these was Finn Wolfhard. Finn was in both Stranger Things as Mike Wheeler and in It as Richie Tozier, and they came out around the same time. Also, both of these pieces of media are set in the 80s. He's really just like the common denominator between all of this. Like if there was a Venn diagram, of and you had like it and stranger things the middle would just be finn in 80s clothes that is that is your common denominator for both of these projects there is literally no other way to explain why they they crossed over other than him he was the only common connection between the two other than them taking place in the 80s once both came out it was like oh okay they both have kind of similar vibes too the duffers have come out and talked about how they've taken inspiration from stephen king stories it being one of them, given like the relationship between all of the kids. So like, it kind of makes sense as to why they became one thing in the eyes of the fandoms for a short period of time. And it was just something that was decided on. Like Finn, of course, had no say in this. It just so happened that he was like in both and everyone was like, okay, now this is one thing and there's gonna be a crossover. 
and that's that and you can't say anything about it because it makes sense because spins in both so obviously we're gonna have the universes collide alternate universes and like crossovers have always been a thing that exists in fandom it's just like something that happens regardless like another common one was like super who lock that is a whole separate thing that i fear i may make a video on just because i also experienced that firsthand now that you've gotten like the basis of the gist of all of this um we are going to just begin into the timeline and so that takes us to the beginning of 2016. The year is 2016. It's July, to be exact. People are enjoying their summers. I was about to go into my sophomore year of high school, which is disgusting to say out loud. The election was only a few months away. Political ads were everywhere. Everyone was miserable. And it was hot, and it sucked. And I think this was also a year where there were, like, record breaking storms for the time being. <sighs> Climate change. And then Netflix came out with an original show called Stranger Things on the 15th of July. And the cast of Stranger Things consisted of Winona Ryder as Joyce Byers, David Harbour as Jim Hopper, Millie Bobby Brown as Eleven, Finn Wolfhard as Mike Wheeler, as I said, Gaten Maserato as Dustin Henderson, Caleb McLaughlin as Lucas Sinclair, Noah Schnapp as Will Byers, Natalia Dyer as Nancy Wheeler, Joe Keery as Steve Harrington, and then Charlie Heaton as Jonathan Byers. And this cast was like insane because Millie and Finn were both like up and coming child actors. And then you also have the two icons of Winona Ryder and David Harbour. And Winona Ryder had not been in anything super big for a few years. She was an it girl of the 80s and 90s. She's been in so many amazing films that have just like become like cultural phenomenons. Beetlejuice, Heathers, Edward Scissorhands, like girl has been in a lot. So viewership skyrocketed. Uh, and it quickly became number one on Netflix for the following weeks to come. I think it was number one for about two months. And within its first month of release, it had 14 million views. And this was a lot for something that no one knew really anything about. Netflix just really started putting out Netflix originals. Originals for streaming services weren't like a common thing. It was something that was like not common practice at the time. It was it was starting to become common practice, but you know, like it, we were in that weird transition period where regular cable television was still something that was going on and then you had all these streaming services like netflix and hulu and max or it was hbo at the time it was a big thing for netflix because they they were trying to get all this original content out there to get people more drawn to their platform and then they came out with original content and then they were like well we need content that will be specific for our streaming service alone which will draw people in and then Stranger Things blew up and so it brought in a lot of new subscribers as well as keeping the ones that they already had. With the viewership exploding in of the first month, the fan base started to like gather around it. It started forming. The reason I even watched the show in 2016 in the first place was because I saw an edit on my fan account and I was like, what is this show? Like, it looks so cool. And then I found out what it was in their caption they were like saying it was stranger things on netflix and i was like what the fuck what this is so cool the kids of the show are quickly getting a lot of recognition for all of their work the kids themselves started gaining their like own little fan base and the reason i say that is because a lot of people myself included were watching this show and being like wow these kids are around my age and they're doing like an amazing job and so like there were a lot of like little teeny boppers coming out of the woodwork and joining the fandom because they were like holy shit like i can kind of relate to them in a way like they're they were nobodies and now they're in this huge show and now they're somebody like it was and they were all very entertaining they're chemistry together is like crazy they would do all those like group interviews specifically like the one that comes to mind is when they were all on jimmy fallon and like they did the game with jimmy fallon and uh finn roasted him he asked if like jimmy could read or something a lot of the fandom then started centralizing mike slash finn and l slash millie because of their puppy love relationship that they have in the first season and this was the birth of Malevin slash Philly, which I will get more into later because there aren't enough words to describe how much I hate both of these ships. I'm sorry if you like Malevin. I can't stand it. I think it's it was like a puppy love thing for the first two seasons. And then after that, it's like they don't need to stay together. The show was very quickly renewed for its second season on August 31st, almost less than a a little bit more than a month after it was released. And they announced that the following year would consist of nine episodes instead of eight, and they will be about an hour long. But a few days before the release of the first season of Stranger Things, 
all the way up in Port Hope, Maine. Principal photography for the remake of Stephen King's popular book, It, was beginning. Principal photography started on July 11th of 2016. And then after the insane success of Stranger Things, more people were becoming more aware of Finn, obviously, because he did so well in the first season. And people were like, wow, what else has this kid done? And then people learned that he was playing Richie Tozier in the It remake. But the cast of It consisted of Bill Skarsgård playing Pennywise, or It, Finn Wolfhard as Richie Tozier, Wyatt Olaf as Stan Uris, Jack Dylan Grazer as Eddie Kasbrock, Jaden Wesley as Bill Dembro, Chosen Jacobs as Mike Hanlon, Jeremy Ray Taylor as Ben Hanscom, and Sophia Lillis as Beverly Marsh. This was like a cr- another cast of mainly children who were up and coming actors who weren't very well known they had minor roles here and there i think the oldest out of all of them was chosen he's my age so like i you know king it was again like the same fans from stranger things that were looking at these kids being like oh my god like they're just like me then saw this cast of another cast of children being like oh my god they are just like me that's crazy and then you had bill skarsgård who's been a who was a well-established actor he's very talented playing pennywise and it was a new version of this villain this iconic horror villain that has existed since the 80s when the first when the book first came out it came out in 1986 and then they had the made for tv movie in the 1990s and this film was being directed by andy muschietti because it was being produced by warner brothers warner brothers gave them the budget it was a classic horror villain that has like existed like you have like your classic horror villains you know what i mean like ghostface and and jason and michael myers freddy krueger i almost said freddy Voorhees. that's not right <laughs> and then you have pennywise who's like another very iconic character like they're all recognizable within the horror industry because they were made big in the 80s and 90s and before it got to andy it actually had two other directors so at first it was with one director in 2005 and then 2009 and then andy got the rights in 2015 and so he started writing the script and developing it and then they eventually started filming in 2016 and they casted earlier in either 2016 or the end of 2015 at the time because it was like all these kids that were like up and coming there wasn't a lot of like buzz around this like you had your like die hard horror Stephen King fans talking about it but not like I don't want to say the general public but like the general public in the way that like Stranger Things had blown up to the point where it's like you have your fandom people but then you also have like normal regular people that watch the show it was like crossing that line into like the normal regular people were starting to hear about it however like the die hard horror fans knew what was going on because Port Hope was slowly being transitioned into Derry like there were buildings being redecorated to be certain things that say like Derry Library or Derry High School and the um the Aladdin Theater like things like that like and so people who live in Port Hope who if you live in Maine I feel like you know so much about Stephen King's lore because that's where he's from that's where 90% of his books take place like Stephen King City is all of the state of Maine but then Stranger Things exploded and it was like in the middle of them filming and like people were following Finn on like social media and Vine and stuff and like him and the cast were posting videos of them filming on set specifically there were like certain videos that went like kind of like crazy viral and it was like them on Vine there was one it was like Rogue Boys I I could quote all of these like it's ridiculous. I'm like embarrassed because now I'm in my 20s and I'm still thinking about something that happened in 2016. Leave me alone. I'm just a girl. All of them were very active on social media. And so you had like road boys and stuff. And like Finn had a very big following on Vine. Jack was posting things. But there's also one of Jack Dylan Grazer where he's like doing an impression of like I think Jake Paul is like making all these noises and shit and it's like the intro to like the YouTubers video and it is genuinely like probably one of the funniest things ever or at least I thought it was at the time like I sat there and giggled at that video for weeks and we're like just goofing around on set and that's basically what filming was like all of the behind the scenes was them like goofing around being kids because they were just kids like they were kids messing around and they were having fun and getting along but it was like moments like this where like they were like okay yeah like this cast is going to be great because like they're getting along they're silly they're joking like they're they're a representation of their characters like very a lot of people were very excited for this there was a lot of high hopes for this film as it was coming out and like it was also announced that Stranger Things season two was happening so can you see where I'm going with this on how the two just like 
became one. But it wasn't until July 13th that the first official image for the film was released, and it was a very close-up picture of what Pennywise was going to look like, which he looks a lot different from how the original Pennywise from the 90s looked like, so a lot of people were very excited for this, like, rebrand of this villain and, like, how he was going to be slightly different, slightly the same. Like, horror fans were geeking out because it's very, like old timey i guess if that makes sense but anyways from the 90s it was very like current clown and it didn't really fit the idea that like pennywise has been around for a really really long time which is like what it is it is an alien being thing that came from space and like crashed before colonization like that's how early on like he has been existing in that space and in that area it was august 16th that um entertainment weekly actually dropped a full image which was a full body shot of what pennywise looked like so it was his costume design and his makeup and his hair and everything was in this like ominous lit photo shoot with fog and it was gray and it was it was really cool like it's a cool image it's very cool to see thank god i'm not afraid of clowns because i don't think i would have been as invested in this movie as i thought i would be but i know a lot of people who are genuinely afraid of clowns i should have given that as a trigger warning at the beginning of this video if you were scared of clowns i'm sorry i apologize but if you don't know what it is and you are afraid of clowns how did that get past you so that was really released uh, August 16th and then September 1st in Toronto, Canada, um, principal photography was wrapped. Uh, they were filming at a studio at that point. Once principal photography wrapped, it just really became like a waiting game because now you had post-production for it happening and production for season two of Stranger Things hasn't happened yet. So that was in development as well towards the end of the year. Anticipation for these and the explosion of Stranger Things and just like the way that Stranger Things just continued to grow after the months after it came out. Um, newer fans, especially those who were younger fans, like I said, closer to the age of the kids from Stranger Things and It started popping up more. My first introduction to Stephen King was learning about It. I That was the beginning of the end, I would say. Like, I had no desire to read the book. First of all, it's huge. Um, but now since then I've read it twice in my lifetime and I don't think I'll ever pick it up ever again. Like it will exist on my shelf and it will sit there and I'll be like, yeah, I read that twice. Once in a year and once in 24 hours. <laughs> Fun lore for me, you know? Think that 15 and 16 year olds should be, should have been reading that book? Absolutely the f*** not. Uh, no. Cause like, 16 years old reading it, the movie was going to be rated R and I wasn't even 17 yet. Like there was no reason for me to be consuming that at the age of 16. Ruined my brain, I think. That might be part of the reason why I'm the way that I am. Anyway, because the next season was to premiere in 2017, they announced that when they announced the renewal for season two of Stranger Things, the turnaround for premiere of the show to its explosion to the filming of the next season was very, very quick. Pre-production started immediately after it was renewed for the show. The Duffers, I think, were already starting to plan out season two. They said that they wrote the scripts very quickly and the way that the se season two was set up was so that seasons one and two tie together very easily, very well, very cohesively. And so like you could watch seasons one and two and be done with the show. In October of 2016, it was announced that Will and Steve will be considered principal characters for the next season which alluded to them having a bigger role we didn't know what it was yet but we did know that they were going to be having a bigger role in the next season also announced that Sadie Sink and Doc Ray Montgomery were going to be joining the cast as Max and Billy but there was not any other details given about their characters either so at least Max was being considered as a central character and Billy was kind of like a side character. Sean Astin and Paul Rezier were also announced uh, to be parts in this and a lot of people were very excited for Sean because, like, he's a well-known actor and been in a lot of stuff. Leanna Barthelson was going to be playing the number eight. We don't, we didn't know who that was at the time. And then Brett Gelman came, um, was also announced to be joining the cast. There was a full table read in November on the fourth, and filming then began three days later on the 7th of November in 2016. Photos started circulating of all of the cast except for Millie. She just was not popping up, which had to do, they kept that under wraps due to the way that season one ends. They didn't want to spoil anything 
Um, and it was kind of like hard under wraps the way that like Marvel is, but like specifically surrounding her. So like anything that had to do with outside, like it was a locked down set. You weren't going to see her. And a lot of the scenes that are outside are at night. So it's not like people were up and around lurking trying to see what Stranger Things was doing, you know what I mean? But we were filming took a pause as the holidays started approaching because that's just a normal practice within uh, the film industry a lot of the time. They didn't pick up filming again until 2017, which leads us to 2017. Filming continued, first season two of Stranger Things, and then wrapped around April, um, but it wouldn't be until June 3rd that the filming was considered officially wrapped. I think they had to do like stuff in studio and also a few reshoots, I'm pretty sure. There was more things going on in the IF fandom during this time as filming was occurring for Stranger Things season two. March, 2017, the first teaser trailer for IT is released and it it got over 197 million views across all platforms within the first day, <laughs> which is crazy. And it the trailer pretty much just like showed what the vibes of the movie was going to be. Like it was very consistent of like what the look was how these characters were going to be seen like just the eerie vibe and just like the style of andy's version of it and then it gaining that many views just set it up set up the predicted outcome of what the mo this movie being released was going to be also said that the release date was officially going to be september 8th of 2017 and like i said the last time it had been adapted was the 90s and so like people seeing the trailer horror fans got excited they got so excited it was like christmas in march for horror diehards not long after that like more parts of the fandom started to expand now you have like actual substance of what this film was going to be and people were like there was a right buzz around it and then just started getting a lot bigger and people were starting to learn more about Stephen King, especially these teeny boppers that exist and like didn't know who Stephen King was or like was never in the horror genre beforehand because you're literally 15 years old, what are you doing? And until May that the fandom truly exploded because of another teaser that came out. It featured a clip of Bill, Richie, and Eddie and Stan looking around in the sewers. It was in the, mi it was like a, a section of the scene that was in the middle of the teaser. Like you had like the vibe, the vibey teaser the beginning and then it was the scene and then more like of the trailer at the end i think the whole thing is like three minutes but like the scene itself is like 50 seconds it's almost a minute long i have this scene memorized <laughs> like i think the amount of times i watched this clip and then also have seen the movie uh, more times than i can count at this point it's one of my letterbox for i it's a comfort film don't come for me okay eddie and richie are down there and he goes i'm starting to get really itchy do you share the same bathroom as your mother sometimes yeah then you probably have crabs that's so not funny aren't you guys coming in uh-uh it's gray water what the hell is gray water basically piss and shit so i'm just telling you, you guys are splashing around in millions of gallons of dairy pee so what it doesn't smell like aqua to me senor i can smell it from here it's probably just your breath wafting back into your face if you heard of a staph infection i'll show you a staph infection and then bill finds a shoe i have mental illness <laughs> okay um <laughs> that was the catapult for the fandom um pretty much because it really showed how these actors were portraying their characters and it was so on point they were it was like perfect casting and uh, someone who has read the book later on and seen the movies in the 90s version i gotta say that the casting for 2017 was more on point with these characters and what their archetypes were and how they acted this made horror fans literally lose their minds because they were like this is going to be a phenomenal adaptation just because of how good the vibes are like the chemistry's crazy at this point in time like it was very weird because like kids weren't being casted as for kid roles insert riverdale you had kids playing kids but you didn't have kids playing teenagers and like they were like young teens like that's what characters are like they're they're young preteen children like and that's who was playing these characters same thing with stranger things like they're young preteen children being played by young preteen children not anymore but you know what i mean but finally in july the final trailer for it came out and it also came out with a lot more of promotional material so a bunch of posters and uh, more photos from set and then there was also a pop-up i believe in la um from august 14th until september 10th and it was a haunted house pop-up that was called the it experience it was just a haunted house that Warner Brothers put up that you could go into and experience parts there were like clips from the film being played in there and the house itself was the Nebel house so like they rebuilt this to make it 
a haunted house as a promo because Warner is insane. So rather, it's a perfect way to promote a, f- a horror film, especially a horror film like this. Like definitely 100%. But the fandom very quickly got overrun by teenage girls once that clip of Finn being Richie got around and like made its rounds to the F- Stranger Things fandom because every girl that was like a preteen that was crushing on Finn was like, oh my God, I have to see this because he's in it. It's like, I've done that with Andrew Garfield. So like, I get it. Like I understand. Brought more teenage girls into the It fandom which was once just consistent of mainly diehard horror fans and people who like Stephen King. That's what the fandom was. And then you had all of these teenage girls coming in and being like, I love this cast. I have a crush on them. And granted, granted, I was one of them, but I love Chosen Jacobs. I still do. (laughs) Um, That is the vibe. That that was just like the vibe. Like it definitely like started becoming a home base for fangirls. That's what was happening. And it was a horror movie based off of children, a group of kids who are trying to defeat a clown that eats children. Like it's so... The internet is so weird. Fandom culture is strange. After the first teaser came out, there was this video that was posted by Jack in 2017 in April, and it was called V-Team. And this was a goofy video made by parts of the cast, which was Finn, Jack, Chosen, and I believe Jaden is also in it, and so is Wyatt. Them messing around in the hotel that they were staying in a week after they all met each other. You watch the video and you think that it was filmed like after they'd finished filming and had known each other for months. No, like this was like a week after they all met and like the vibes were definitely there. There's this one clip of Jack like drowning Finn that like kind of like made its rounds in the Stranger Things fandom as well, as well as that one picture of Finn where he like looks deeply uncomfortable. That was from that video. So like people were finding that and being because of because Finn was in it. If you were in the Stranger Things fandom, you definitely saw that video. Like, and then that also brought more people into the It fandom, which then just like led to the crossover happening. <laughs> it's like a very specific brand of like fangirl that you were. This was all over like any space that like fandom existed in. For the time being was Instagram and Tumblr. Those were kind of like your main fandom places. I had like Twitter and stuff, but I was too scared to go on Twitter as a child. So I'm scared to go on Twitter as a adult it went from like rarely talked about to so many people posting about the films and like nine times out of ten it was being posted by fans who were also in the stranger things fandom which is where this like crossover is starting to happen i know you can see the vision you can see it finally the premiere of it happens in hollywood on september 5th and then it was out to the public on september 7th i know i said september 8th it actually came out on september 7th which was that thursday and i went to go see it three times and i had to sneak into the theater because i was still only 16 and i was like this is going to change my brain chemistry for the next forever opening weekend the film grossed over 123.4 million dollars worldwide which made it the 29th biggest opening in the u.s and canada and the largest horror film opening ever at the time that would then later be overcome by scream 5 and then later by five nights at freddy's it was at the top spot for a while overall the film ended up making 701.8 million dollars worldwide 328 Point eight million of that was in the U.S. and then three seventy three million was the rest of the territories that it was released in. Budget was only twenty four to like thirty five million. Crazy. They definitely made their money back. Like that was it's insane. Like that they were even able to make a film of that like level with that little of a budget. And I say little of a budget in terms of like film stuff and what it was. Like it, it was like the quality for that amount crazy. Andy's very talented. It was safe to say that the blockbuster was a success and ended up being the highest grossing Stephen King film adaptation to ever exist. And I think it still holds that spot. And then part two was teased pretty much immediately after the film came out. Like it was September 25th that it was announced that part two was going to be released in 2019 on September 6th. Like they had a date ready and everything. Andy like said that it was, they had big plans for it. It was going to be 27 years in the future and you were gonna have flashbacks between the adults and the kids. So there was gonna be newer Losers Club scenes essentially with the original cast. The success of the film caused the fandom to grow even bigger, which is what happens. It's just like a natural thing that happens within fandom. Like you have a very successful film and movie 
and then they will like the fandom just grows with it it was in theaters for a while because it was a horror film that was going i think supposed to go until halloween it had a, a normal two month like theatrical release which is pretty average for films especially of the size and of that popularity they just kept it in theaters but because of that it overlapped with the release of season two of stranger things this is where things start to get interesting october 27 2017 Season two. <laughs> I sounded like the intro to Mean Girls. <laughs> 27th, 2017, season two of Stranger Things drops on Netflix. Pairing perfectly with the previous release of It in theaters. And Halloween being only a few days later. It was nine one-hour episodes, like I said previously. And it was highly received, receiving over 49 million views in the first three days of its release. Which is like the entirety of of the show which is crazy but before the second season was even released a third season was confirmed in august of 2017 netflix pretty much knew that like regardless it was going to be well received and the viewership pretty much doubled from the previous season it was number one for the longest time i firmly believe that the show could have ended at season two and that could have been that they wrap it up very well then they announced season three and everyone was like well there is more to come because there is a cliffhanger at the end it's not a huge cliffhanger but it is a cliffhanger i'm not going to go too far in depth about my opinions of the show because it's not really the whole point of this video or even talks during this time after season two came out that the show would go on for another like up to like four or five seasons that was the deal that the duffers were getting with netflix like that was how insanely well received this show was which is just like absolutely bonkers it was a netflix original one of the first few netflix originals like and it was doing so well definitely like brought in the views that they were looking for and the people that they wanted on their platform because of how big that the show was and they knew that if they kept throwing money at it it would still make them money because people were going to watch it regardless because it was such a highly well-received show that was being nominated for dozens and dozens of awards every award season they knew what they knew what they were doing but the duffers admitted that they had been writing they started planning out season three back in 2015 when they started writing the show because they didn't want to be caught off guard in case they got renewed for that much which is an incredibly bold thing to assume especially in the film and tv industry where like things just got canceled for no reason all the time but like if you have that much delusional confidence in your product and your story and everything then like i guess slay but with the overgrowing popularity of these two pieces of media coming out at the same time having one person that stars in both of them there began to be an overlap of fans and there had already been an overlap of fans but because both the se the second season and it were at this like high grossing level at the same time the crossover of fans got even bigger the pool of crossover fans got larger the middle of the venn diagram expanded it was only natural for the crossover to happen there were edits there were au's there were fix there was fan art almost any and every piece of fandom culture that exists within a fandom happened for the both of these pieces of media together as one. That included the Stranger Things gang teaming up with the Losers Club to defeat a big bad, whether that be the Demogorgon or Pennywise, like they were together. So there was like at least 13 children. That's terrifying in itself. If I had 13 13 year olds coming at me, I'd be scared too. That's too many kids. It's scary, it's terrifying. And usually the cross section, was Richie and Mike were identical twins. Who would have thought of that? That is a crazy, unique idea. <laughs> so instead of Richie Tozier, it was Richie Wheeler. Why? I don't know. But like, I guess because there were more Wheelers than there were Toziers. Like, there were five members of the Wheeler family. So it only made sense for Mike to have a twin brother named Richie who was annoying. <laughs> because they were played by the same actor, Finn Wolfhard. <laughs> unique thoughts <laughs> it's also kind of assumed that if you were in one fandom you were in the other it wasn't if you were in the stranger things fandom it wasn't assumed that you were in the it fandom already it was if you were in the it fandom it was already assumed that you were part of the stranger things fandom because there were less it mains than stranger things mains if that makes sense i don't know if any of those words work together in a string of a sentence but regardless if you were in both of them and in that crossover section it was hard to be part of one fandom without hearing about the other just because of the timing and the popularity like it was very clear that these two fandoms were one in certain aspects of the word but then we get into the drama 2017 2018 was like really the height of all of this especially 2018 because like the two pieces of media came out at the end of the year it leads me to the shipping wars and the drama that existed between both fandoms and you want to know who was in the middle say it with me finn wolfhard <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
and he didn't want to be okay we're gonna get into it all fandoms have their main ships it's just something that happens um and a ship if you don't know what a ship is a ship is basically like an it couple of the fandom and it's usually like two of the most popular characters put together they're like theorized to be in a relationship whether that be canon or not it's not always two popular characters but it usually is there were a few different ships in both the stranger things and the it fandom there were very rarely ships that were crossed over across fandoms across the two fandoms but they did exist there just weren't any that were super popular being crossover ships not that i could think of or i could recall as someone who has experienced that who experienced this period of time firsthand max and bev being best friends like that was like a very common one then you had like will and eddie being friends because they were both dating a Finn Wolfhard variant. Like, it, like there was that, too. We're going to talk about the It ships first, and then we're going to talk about the Stranger Things ships, and then we're going to talk about the war, the battle that occurred on in the ether. The most popular ship in It is Richie and Eddie, also known as Reddy. And this is not something that was new. This is, since the book had come out, was a theory that Richie and Eddie were in love with each other. Because of how certain scenes were written, the chemistry between um, the actors who play them across the board so like the adults in the 90s the child actors in the 90s and the child actors in the 2017 version which like don't ship minors it's weird i d- <laughs> fandom culture is a very strange experience because like when you are a teenager it's fine if you're shipping two teenagers together but then if you're an adult and you're shipping two teenagers together it's creepy stop doing it don't be a f- weirdo but it like it has existed since like the 80s and 90s that there was like romantic tension between richie and eddie specifically in their adult characters which was only made worse by part two in 2019 but whatever king of course was like no that's not how i wrote them they're not gay like i refuse to acknowledge that they're gay but it's like you're wrong i don't care you wrote these characters you are incorrect i d- dude like if you read your own writing can you tell me that there's not anything going on here they're just friends. Okay. The historians say that all the time about gay people. Historians will say that they were besties. Like, can you get a grip, please? <laughs> like, adult Richie and Eddie are in love and they got married and they had a kid and lived a happy life. Don't look at me like that. Shut up. After this film came out, like, it rose to popularity yet again. Is it really a fandom if there's not a gay ship that's the centralized part of it? No, it's not. In every fandom, there is a gay ship that is at the center. The gays take over everything. I love queer people. Aside from Reddy, there was also. <laughs> I hate saying these things out loud. Besides from Ready, there was like two other ships and it was kind of like a love triangle almost. And Stephen King did write this. And it was between Ben, Beverly, and Bill. When they're children, Beverly has a little crush on Bill, but when she's an adult, she has a crush on Ben. It's like she has feelings for Ben. Like it's a whole thing. There was like a mini shipping war between the two. So it was Bill Verley and Ben Verley. Yes, these are the names. Please, like, I know they sound the same. I I know, I hear it. And my answer, Bev is a lesbian. But that is besides the point. But if I had to choose in making her straight, I would say Ben Burley because it's just cute and it makes more sense. You also have Stenbro, which is Bill and Stan. But then, and you also have Hambro, which is Mike and Bill. And then you also have Stanlin, which is Mike and Stan. And then there's the thruple of it all, which I think is Stan Hambro. I think that's what it was called. Stan Hambro. I believe. Because there's seven people and it's uh, uneven. One of them will be alone. Usually it's Mike and I blame racism on that. Look, not everybody needs to be shipped together, but it's the fandom way. And once the gays get their hands on things, it's over. But like in a fun, quirky way. I hate that I use the word quirky, but you know what I mean. Queers just want to be seen. You know what I mean? Like that's why the Marauders fandom exists. It's harmless. And if you get offended, you're homophobic. I hate to break it to you. But then you have the Stranger Things fandom. There are ships in there too. And a lot of them. Because there are so many characters. You have Malevin, which is Mike and Eleven. Then you also have Byler, which is Will and Mike. I'm gonna elaborate, I promise. There there was also Lumax, which popped up in season two, which was Max and Lucas. Um, This has kind of been a central ship throughout the last few seasons as well, which for the most part was pretty wholesome um, in the fandom, now tragic given how season four ended. There's also Chopper, which falls under the same boat of like, tragic wholesome um which is joyce and hopper there's also the argument the love triangle between nancy steve and jonathan and the argument that people are like nancy should be back with steve and or nancy should just stay with jonathan 
My answer, neither. <laughs> My answer is neither of them. Girl doesn't need to be in a relationship. She knows how to use a gun. But after the release and ending of season two, Malevin fans started to run rampant on the internet and became some of the most annoying people on the planet. I think this is part of the reason why I hated the ship, and I still do, because a lot of its fan not all of them, but a lot of its fan, their fans, were annoying as hell. And I, like, to the point of frustration, and, like, I can't blame them, because they're just teenagers talking about something that they care about, but it's also, like, Girl, you don't have to be mean and homophobic because of it. A bunch of homophobic shit started popping up because if you shipped Byler over Malevin, you were attacked by Malevin fans. Like, the Byler versus Malevin argument exists in the fandom to this day. Dear god it like hasn't ended and i promise you when the last season comes out it's going to be just as bad it's like after season two it got significantly worse and never went away like it just became annoying it became an annoying stupid fucking argument that people like to get into all the time this led to a bigger and much worse situation in my opinion and that was when fans took the shipping beyond characters and began shipping real life actors together caught in the crossfire once again was philium wolfhard william but finn i'm not explaining the joke it's stupid this is where the fandoms crossed over in the worst way in my opinion because it basically caused a never-ending battle it was a war and that war was between fac just finn and jack and philly just finn and millie i personally believe it's weird to ship real life people together those are real human beings don't do that it's creepy it's strange but it's even weirder when they're all minors what are you doing i need you to log off and go outside i don't care <laughs> i don't care that most of the people who were shipping these real life people were the same age as them like they were also minor shipping minors it's still weird it's still odd it's still strange don't do it and the reason this even came to fruition is because of how popular reddy was and Malevin was in their respective fandoms and people just took it way too far and because it just so happened that two different characters from the two different shows were played by the same person who had great chemistry with his co-stars which is his job the issue just like continued to get worse because Jack kept leaning into the whole ready thing with fans then people were like oh my god like what if Finn himself is gay and it's like no you're talking about characters and real people those are two different things and also do not assume actors or anybody's sexuality that's also weird i'm in no way blaming jack for any of this like he just like he was leaning into something that he thought was like pandering to fans which in reality it was just strange it's entirely on the fans taking something that was clearly a joke too far especially when jack would act with with fan a certain way like but then fans are going to see that and be parasocial and strange and take it to the next level where it shouldn't have gone same thing like happened with millie and finn as well like it was the same same thing, like, they were good friends because they were working together. And, like, it's just, like, people were taking it way too far. It ruins your, the, like, real-life relationship that these people have with the people that they work with because of how far our fans were taking it. Like, it was, to the point of, like, death threats and shit. Like, it was ridiculous. It was, like, around this time, like, people were speculating that Finn and Millie were dating because of how close they were as friends and co-stars. They had to be. They were playing friends. People who liked each other on the show. Yeah, they're gonna have good chemistry. Yeah, it, like if they didn't, you wouldn't believe that it could be possible. So like, yeah, no fucking shit that they had to be close. You don't know these people. I don't know these people even making this video. Like, you don't know them. If you thought that it was socially acceptable to ship two minor, real life minors together, you were either one or the other. You were not both. Like, there was like a side you had to pick, and it was like very strange. You weren't a real fan of Finn's if you didn't ship blank. Like, that was like the argument that was being made on both sides. If you shipped Finn with any of his real life friends, ever you are not a fan of his because you're crossing a line that doesn't need to be crossed and it was very clear that the situation made him uncomfortable i think he like even spoke out about it multiple times i was like hey yeah no this is weird stop doing this please it's just a reminder that celebrities don't owe you anything that goes for who they're dating what their sexuality is who they hang out with out offline like absolutely nothing they don't owe you any ex like any of that like they don't need to disclose parts of their personal life to the public it is called their personal life for a reason as a fan do not have the right to know that information which is a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow 
in the day and age of parasocial relationships, but it is the truth. The war began to simmer down once rumors of Millie Bobby Brown and Jacob Sartorius began to rise around the end of December. And you might have forgotten this information because now she's married and in a happy, loving relationship. I did it, though. 2018. What a very interesting time to exist within this fandom because almost immediately things started to take a turn in the new year. Popularity of the fandoms had grown to a significant size. If you were in the fandom space on Instagram or Tumblr or anything during this time, you knew about them. You were either part of the fandoms or you knew a lot about them against your will. It's like you didn't have a choice. Trolleys were everywhere. They were lurking and stalking when you least expected it. Even if you weren't either of these fandoms, you probably heard about the situation that I'm about to talk about. Any and all celebrity news outlets because they all covered it. And I am talking about Vapegate. January 1st, 2018. A video of Jack Nolan Grazer goes viral on the internet of him smoking a blunt. He didn't actually smoke it. Dude like inhaled the smoke, didn't actually inhale and then blew it out immediately. It's a ridiculous video. Okay, he I think was 15 at the time, entering his first cancelization, like public cancelization, but people were trying to give him the excuse that he didn't actually inhale anything. So it doesn't really count, but it was like he still did the thing. So like it does count to a degree. Their video surfaced of him vaping, then popped up. But in that video, and in that video he clearly inhales, guess who's in it? Finn? Wolfhard and why Olaf are in the video and watching him do it like he blows the smoke in Finn's face and like Finn looks uncomfortable When I tell you Finn has been at the scene of every single fucking part of this. It's ridiculous He's usually never the one initiating anything. He's just a bystander and This triggered like that conversation that usually comes up when like one celebrity does something wrong and saying that Finn and the rest of the and Finn and Wyatt and the rest of the cast are responsible for his actions because they know better So they should tell him they should have told him not to vape or post the video or whatever which is insane to say because you can say something to your friend about not doing something that does not mean that they are going to listen to you because they are individuals with their own decisions that they make and own free will you don't know what they said to him because you don't know these people someone can tell you not to do something and you could do it anyway the shit storm just got worse for jack because he wasn't saying anything online when all of this was released people were encouraging jack to come forward and kind of like apologize and explain and like take accountability for his actions and then the next day jack posted an apology video explaining what he did and blamed it on peer pressure but school and like wanting to look cool or whatever which is like the normal basis argument that every teenager gives when they're caught doing something they're not supposed to of course, it's like, it was like very much like a curated apology by his PR team and parents like to just make everything look better to like clean up his online image. And like, here's the thing. Teenagers do drugs. They make stupid decisions. They do dumb things. Fortunately, Jack making the mistake that he did, being a public figure and in the public was a hit to his reputation. And that was because he, as a teenager, out in the open for the internet to view and see, and it has repercussions when he does something wrong because the internet blows things out of proportion. Eventually, people moved on and just like forgot about the whole thing and there was like a mini like dare campaign running rampant in both fandoms. Be people being like, don't do drugs or smoke, it's bad for you, you'll die. There were older fans explaining that like doing something like that when you're younger and like your brain isn't fully developed, it'll like fuck you up for life and stuff. I'm not saying dude, don't do drugs, don't do that. I'm not saying, I'm not condoning drugs. And that was the beginning of 2018. And things just <laughs> things just kept going. I like not even a month later on Valentine's Day, <laughs> Millie posted a photo of her and Jacob Sartorius and confirmed that they were dating. And everybody lost their goddamn mind because it's Jacob Sartorius because I think he was like on musically at the time. You know, he was Jacob Sartorius. <laughs> this is two things. It slowed down people shipping Millie and Finn together, which like great. Finn deserved a fucking break. This poor poor kid. And it put the rumors of them allegedly dating to rest because it was confirmed obviously so it's like an innocent like relationship type thing again teenage love the relationships you have when you were a teenager that's what it was like it was innocent and sweet like at least that was the public image of it but with buzz beginning around the cast again in march 2018 it was announced that maya hawk was going to be joining the cast for the third season as as well as priya ferguson being a more prominent role filming began in april of 2018 unlike previous seasons it was mainly starting in the state of Georgia and the main one that stuck out was when the mall was being redecorated to be a star court mall because that was where a good chunk of the season takes place including the like final battle 
in the last episode. Continued on from April through the summer, and then September, there was spotting of Millie filming like a very emotional scene in California. Principal photography finally wrapped in November of 2018. So they filmed from April until November, which is a very long time to film. However, the first teaser for this third season dropped in the middle of them filming in July. In the middle of filming the third season, there was also a meme going around that was purely ironic. It was clearly a joke. But again, the internet takes things way too far. It was that Millie was homophobic. And there were, sc- it was like basically like screenshots of her Snapchat and then like another caption added on it. Cause like you can put photos in Snapchat and like write your own captions on top of it. And it looks like a, like a, a real screenshot or like a real Snapchat, whatever. The most popular one was that she like ran over a gay person with her car or something. And then like called them a slur or something. Like, or like, it was like, I can't believe that Millie Bobby Brown found out that I was gay and hit me with her car. Like that was like the main one. It started off like that, which was like, not that extreme like it's extreme but it's not that extreme and it's clearly a joke the internet but then took it and like made it worse and there were like even more like vulgar posts of course like all of them aren't true none of them were true none of it was a true situation if like you look at the post you're like there's no way that's real because it wasn't real. if you were seeing it for the first time especially like the first one you would be like what is she actually homophobic because like the main argument was like millie's homophobic like that was what was being said and people were like what are you talking about and then someone would send the screenshot and they'd be like that's obviously not real again it's a bunch of teenagers in this fandom that are super gullible and don't understand irony necessarily and like it just it was taken way too far like it went across the line to the point where millie was 16 at the time and sees all of that all over her social media and is bound to be affected by it because she's a 16 year old girl and like people are saying things that she's like homophobic and like awful and like hates a certain group of people when it's like that's not true (laughs) it's a heart which like yeah she's 16 years old and if like even if it's like an ironic thing it's gonna hurt your feelings like you're a teenage girl like come on she made a statement and ended up deactivating her twitter account then weeks later she came out with like an anti-bullying campaign um that actually did pretty well i think she raised a good chunk of money however there were people giving her shit for it because they knew what the anti-bullying campaign was inspired by and like were making jokes those were the people who were like in the fandom like feeding into the meme shouldn't have been that funny in the first place and then it got taken to the extreme it was also around this time that she announced that her and jacob broke up as well and so like it, there was just a lot going on with her and like clearly she was like going through a lot emotionally in her personal life and it's just like one thing after another and she just ended up deactivating her twitter and i don't think she's ever gone back to the app which like good for her queen you're not missing anything i promise all season three was in development it chapter two was also in development. Again, overlap was crazy. It was like basically around the same time. February 2018, Jessica Chastain is announced to be playing Beverly Marsh. Andy actually mentioned when they announced that they were doing the second movie, the she was his pick for Bev because they had worked to get together in the past and they had a really great working relationship. And then in April, it was announced that Bill Hader and James McAvoy were going to be playing adult Richie and adult Bill Dembro. And then in May, James Ranson... Jay Ryan and Andy Bean were announced to be playing adult Eddie, Ben, and Stan. And then Isaiah Mustafa didn't join the cast as adult Mike until June of 2018. Filming started pretty much immediately after he was casted and continued throughout the summer. July 2nd, a full photo of the of all of the adult cast together was released. Kinda looks like Jesus and his apostles. And apostles. Apostles? Apostles. Kinda looks like the Last Supper. And I- (laughs) You see it. I know you see it. I know you see it. A lot of the filming was happening around Port Hope, Maine again. So at Pinewood Studios in Toronto because they had a lot of sets that they had to build for the sewers and all of that stuff. In September, there were a lot of filming was happening in Port Hope in September um, because there were a lot of set photos being released, including the one that I think a lot of people have talked about before, especially Bill Hader. And it was Bill Skarsgård scaring him in his Pennywise thing because like he just like showed Bill Hader that he could like make his eyes go in two separate directions and it's not CGI, it's like him doing it. And it freaked him out and Bill Hader ran away. And they're really funny pictures. I think that they're hilarious. There were also a lot of photos of the younger cast with their older character's counterpart um, being released on the internet as well. So like it was pretty much confirmed that there would be flashbacks and with the kids, which the fandom was very excited about to have like younger The Losers Club content. And wrap until November of 2018, around the same time Stranger Things did. And it was 86 days of filming, which as an AD, I would kill myself. (laughs) 
Imagine looking at a call sheet and it says one of 86. I think I'd cry. <laughs> I'd be excited, especially if it was a part two. But like, I'd be like, holy fuck, that's a lot of days. That's a long time. And as filming for part two was underway, many fans were expressing if Reddy was going to become canon in part two because it would be less weird because they're not minors, they're adults. There were a lot of fans advocating for either Richie or Eddie or both to be canonically gay. The fan in law, I would say, for the most part, for Richie and Eddie, is that Richie is bi and Eddie is gay. And that's just like, the fanon is, that is not canon. Well, technically it could be. And this resulted in people constantly pestering Andy and his sister, who wrote the script, if it would appear. And Andy eventually went on record and said no. That was not something that was present in the first film. It was not something that would be direct, that was directly from the book. So it's not going to be in the movie. It's not going to be present. You're not going to get any ready content. It's not real. James Ranson, who was playing Eddie, also fuck him, he's a weirdo, said he could, he would continue to talk to Andy about it and the possibilities of that happening. Hi, I'm editing right now and I realize I got my information completely wrong. James Ranson is actually extremely f***ing homophobic and is the reason why the kiss didn't happen in It Part 2. Actually, Bill Hader and Andy that was pushing for that to happen but because James Ranson is both homophobic and transphobic, it didn't. I remember him at least at one point saying that he wanted Ready to be a thing, but I think it was a joke. Because Bill Hader does not like have like any public social media, it was a thing that like got, I guess, miscommunicated because Andy at one point did say, no, there's not gonna be Ready. Ready is not gonna be a key point in this. But I think he was saying that because he didn't want to get fans hopes up. Mixed that up in my brain when I was writing the script. So I don't know how that got completely misconstrued. I apologize for getting my information wrong. But yeah, fuck James Ranson. He's the reason why we didn't get the Ready kiss. That's it. Back to the thing. The fans had hoped that Ready would live on and begin to speculate like what would happen in the movie if it did happen. So like there were a lot of theories going on of like how it could have been included or like whatever, especially with the flashback stuff. Both projects wrapped at the same time, like I said, and then it became another waiting game. However, the fandoms were still very active and reeling with theories and possibilities for both season three and what part two would be like and based off of just like the little breadcrumbs and uh, marketing breadcrumbs that were being dropped as filming was happening and concluding and all of that stuff. But it wasn't really until the Summer, that things started to like actually drop. June 2019. June of 2019 was when the final trailer of season three of Stranger Things was released, only a few weeks from the final release. There were a few teasers released before that, um, and posters as well. And it was very much like 80s summer. That was the vibe. Uh, because it was coming, it was being released on July 4th of 2019. July 17th, after Stranger Things came out, the official trailer for it was released at comic-con this was only two weeks after season three of stranger things dropped on july 4th after season three dropped over 18 million people watched the entire season within the first four days of it being released and within the first month of the season being released it had 64 million views every season's viewership increasing for obvious reasons the show's popularity only increased with each season because the stakes kept getting higher the budgets kept getting higher the storylines kept expanding so like of course like the, the viewership and everything is going to go up because you have old fans returning and new fans discovering it from the new season opinions were super super mixed when season three came out i was one of those people to me it felt like two different seasons mixed together the summer vibe was correct this was like kind of a general consensus critics were very critical of it um it definitely wasn't like a favorite of any of the seasons the main reason why people had issues with it was because of the insane amount of product placement that was in season three the main one being coca-cola it was shown in every single episode <laughs> Like, it was present, like, in the set deck in every single episode, and it was even mentioned in the dialogue multiple times throughout episodes. Netflix said that there wasn't a paid endorsement, they didn't pay for the endorsement, and Coca-Cola didn't pay for the endorsement. It just was there. Which, people had a lot of issues with this statement when Netflix made it, because it very much felt like an ad. Like, the whole season felt like a Coke ad, and it pissed a lot of people off, because, like, we get advertisements for everything, shoved down your throat constantly, all the time, no matter what you are doing on the internet, watching tv driving down the highway like ads are everywhere in american culture and people were kind of just pissed off that they also existed in their show that they really liked i understand that makes sense i wouldn't want to be advertised that when i'm trying to relax 
and watch a show not a forbidden practice but it is one that is frowned upon especially in this day and age like people don't want to have extra ads shoved down their throat on a coke ad in the middle of my sci-fi show that makes no sense dude but on the plus side of season three robin's character i've been spoiling both of these this entire video so sucks for you i'm sorry your last warning before i give a spoiler robin is canonically a lesbian and comes out to steve in the bathroom after the two of them get fucked up by these russians was a really big deal because she was the first canonically gay character in the show even though people have their speculation this also sent the fandom into a spiral and when it came to will's sexuality and also mike's but mainly will's byler was however shipped even more with seasons two and three because there's a scene with mike and will when they're fighting at the beginning of season three and mike says a line that says it's not my fault that you don't like girls not it's not my fault that you're not in a relationship it's not my fault that you don't like girls. As if like Will has insinuated that he has never liked girls before. Then made people assume that Will was gay. The shipping words started all over again. It was once again, Byler M11 at the scene of the crime. Now that you have a canonically lesbian character, it just opened the possibility for Will to be gay. And like, it was very much hinted at in season three. Schnapp continued to say that Will's sexuality was up to interpretation when all of this like buzz was around it and he wouldn't confirm anything the duffers wouldn't either but we will get into why later when i talk about season four but season four was then announced on september 30th via a minute long video <laughs> also signed as a multi-year contract between the duffers and netflix it was huge like it was a big chunk of money and i think they were signed for seasons four and five they only confirmed four as the stranger things fandom continued to be the way that they are it part two just kept getting closer and closer august 26th was when the premiere of the film happened in Hollywood. Both the child and adult actress were present for the premiere. There was a very cool red carpet photo that was taken with all of them, plus Andy and Bill Skarsgård. It was released to the public on September 6th, a month after Stranger Things season three was released. Rare, I was there, I remember it all too well. And like Sadie Sink in the All Too Well music video, I also sobbed hysterically. Why? Because Andy Muschietti is a goddamn liar. Andy said over and over that Reddy was not going to be canon, that it didn't work for the plot, that Richie and Reddy aren't gay. The movie opens with the homophobic hate crime scene, which by the way, unless you read the book, you don't know it's there. And a lot of people had issues with the fact that there was no warning given going into this movie and they were under fire for not giving a warning about this very, very graphic display of homophobic violence. Every time I rewatch the film, I skip over it because it's just, it's gross. Very graphic. He fucking lied to everyone. Boiler warning again. The whole goddamn scene with Richie when he's going around Derry and he's getting his token for the ritual of Chud. Part of the plot. Um, long story, watch the movie. He goes to the abandoned arcade slash movie theater, which is the Aladdin. We are then immediately transitioned from adult Richie to child Richie flashback. And Richie is being called an F-slur by Henry Bowers. Nicholas Hamilton is actually a gay man, by the way. I just want to say that before anybody comes, starts to pop off in the comments. He, he is gay. If any actor was going to say the F word in the movie, it's better that it was him. Not that you should, but it, at least he was saying. We turn transition back to adult Richie and Pennywise is taunting him and is saying that he knows his secret his dirty little secret that secret being that he's gay and then there's also a flashback scene later where Richie is carving his initials his initial and a plus sign into the kissing bridge but you don't see who the other initial is until the very end of the movie after Eddie is dead and guess what the initial is it's a E. It says R plus E, which is Richie plus Eddie, which means that Richie was in love with Eddie since they were kids, and then he remembered that shit after Eddie dies. And this man watches Eddie die in his arms. And Eddie says something to him before he dies. And he says, Richie, I need to tell you something. You can see the hope in Richie's eyes that Eddie's gonna maybe say that he loves him or that whatever, blah, 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 blah. No, he says, I fucked your mom. And then he dies. I look, I was so mad and hysterically crying at the same time because Andy is a liar. He lied to us about this. And it pissed me off because I was like, no, we're not gonna get it. So I wasn't holding out hope. And then it happened and I was sobbing hysterically because Eddie was already dead, which meant that Richie couldn't be happy. 
hate Andy forever for doing that. He didn't need to do that. It hurt my feelings. <laughs> I was like a fucking baby by the end of that film. And I went to go see that movie with my former lit teacher from high school. And she looked at me like I was crazy. And the fandom was on the same page as me. Like, yes, Ready was made canon, but at what cost? The Fix It Fix, though went so hard they were so good i i think i read like maybe at least six absolutely love them ate them up every single one anyway i'm done with ranting about ready it part two ended up making over seven 37 million dollars opening day and grossed 91 million opening weekend which is significantly less than part one made in total it ended up making 473.1 million overall and then 211.6 million in the u.s and canada and then 261.5 million other territories it was also banned in a lot of countries because of the gayness of it all it ended up being 30 million less than what the first film made opening weekend um and it was because of the mixed reviews but also a lot of people thought it had to do with the fact that it was a th almost a three hour runtime like the film is two hours and 55 minutes long part two is a lot because you're going back and forth from them being kids and adults and like you're having to establish the whole like killing of it and what it may be because they didn't establish it when they were kids which is when they actually do learn what it truly is uh, there were a lot of things that weren't included in the first movie that they had to include in the second one for everything to wrap up and make sense andy he didn't do like a direct like book to screen adaptation he did change a lot of things but the real ones went it was me i went to opening night kind of meant like the end of an era because there were talks about andy directing a show covering all of the prequel stuff that happens in dairy that's in the book that isn't even mentioned in the two films but at the time of the film's release there was really nothing being confirmed it was just like rumors nothing had been greenlit it was just like talks about it potentially being a thing and like andy came out and said he wanted to do it there was no like confirmation that that would be happening after the film came out the fandom lived on for a few more months crept into the 2020 year for a little bit because there was some stuff which leads us to 2020 at the tail end of the it fandom a silly little show called i'm not okay with this was released on netflix in february of 2020 the show was starring wyatt and sophia who were both part of it and remain friends and the show was incredibly well received by the current stranger things and it fans since it was starring two it stars and a few executive producers just from Stranger Things worked on it. And it was it had great audience reception and it was actually based off of a graphic novel that was pretty popular. The show ended on a major cliffhanger, nodding to the possibility of a continuation. However, Netflix canceled it. I will never forgive them for that because I would have loved another season. Past in that was really great. There were people that were kind of recognizable and like the chemistry was amazing. It was funny. It was suspenseful. Like it was a really cool show and it could have gone very far in my opinion because it kind of the vibe that stranger things had but netflix canceled it even though it was very well received and had really a lot of really good reviews it was also in february of 2020 that the duffers announced that season four was in production in lithuania <laughs> no one had no idea what this could mean theories immediately started to pop up however it was short-lived because filming was shut down on march 16th 2020 because of the pandemic and it also killed the fandoms in the process uh, for a very long time season four filming was put on an indefinite hold because of the way that the world was the state of everything um there was no new content for the it fandom so it just kind of died like there were breadcrumbs from i'm not okay with this but that didn't last very long after netflix canceled the show did not hold the fandom over forever and it has kind of died since then even though there are diehard fans like me who are who talk about it constantly all the time because i have been hyper fixed on it since 2016 it was a dark time to be part of the fandom because you're just kind of watching it die before your eyes <laughs> After 2018 into 2019, the crossover aspect of the fandom like no longer existed. It just wasn't there anymore. Everything was on hold. The whole world was on hold. It was like somebody hit a pause button and like stopped everything from happening until things started to develop and the film industry could come back with a lot of protocols in place. And in November of 2020, it was announced that Jamie Campbell Bauer, Joseph Quinn, and Eduardo Franco were going to be joining the cast for season four of Stranger Things. Characters, however, were unknown. They didn't know who they were playing, but you did know that they would be present in the show. I'm not going to go into any more details about the pandemic because we all experienced it. We all know what that was like, and it was a group traumatic event. So moving on to 2021, season four resumes. As 2020 continued, the world began to adapt, as I said, as it usually does. We as humans like to adapt. We are very adaptable creatures. Um, vaccines were put out, protocols were put in place, and masks were mandated, which then allowed filming to come back to a degree. It was very limited, but filming could come back and certain projects could go back to work. In January, 
January of 2021, there were seems, scenes for Stranger Things spotted being filmed in Atlanta. And in March of 2021, set photos were leaked of a trailer that was overrun by the Upside Down, like the vines and stuff that exist in the Upside Down. Um, and those made the rounds on the internet. So people knew that filming was happening and things were definitely being shot for season four. And filming continued sporadically throughout the year. Filming wrapped in September of 2021 a teaser shortly followed the wrapping of season four it was showing the creel house but no one knew what it was yet because the season hadn't come out wouldn't be another few months until anything else was released which leads us to 2022 no word for like a long time the stranger things fandom was surviving off of crumbs and the it fandom was beyond dead in february four teaser posters were released all featuring different teams of characters it wouldn't be until april though that the official trailer was released and it was announced the new season would be coming out in two volumes may 27th was when the first seven episodes would be released and then july 1st five weeks after that the last two episodes would drop however the last two episodes were told said to be at least two hours each so that was why they were being dropped separately but everybody thought this was a stupid decision i still think it's dumb that netflix is dropping things separately people lost their minds it was the first time that netflix split up the release but they were doing it to keep money and to keep people from canceling their subscriptions because people were canceling them, their subscriptions because of the pandemic people lost a shit ton of money and the economy went to hell so like you know people weren't paying for things like netflix that weren't a necessity for sure things wasn't the only fandom receiving crumbs in march of 2022 believe it or not it was announced that andy would officially be directing the series following the prequel information from it dropped with a title called welcome to dairy and it would be released on hbo max this was enough for the it fandom to come back for like a few weeks a few days and then die again because it just wasn't enough to like hold everyone over because there was really no new content it was just news Stranger things actually started to pick back up again the first volume was released and fans caught on to a very specific mistake that the duffers made and it was that will's birthday was forgotten and the duffers said they were going to go back and change it change when will's birthday was but this was met with a lot of confusion because will's birthday is a very specific plot point in season two in a very specific episode so it's like very odd <laughs> but they just like cut those scenes apparently or that dialogue apparently fans then assumed that the duffers were cutting other stuff that was considered like weird or strange from the season the previous seasons specifically jonathan like taking the pictures of nancy and but then they announced that they were not taking anything else out and the only thing that was changed was will's birthday to correct the mistake that they made in season four only like a certain few lines that were cut from that one episode of season two but everything else was the same but then again i haven't rewatched the show because i just haven't felt the need to so more info on will's character he's very gay in the season and it is in july via a variety article that noah schnapp confirms that will is in fact gay and yet again this set the byler ship on fire because it was now confirmed that will is very very much not straight and in love with mike and so the intense shippers took it too far like they usually do basically took it as the ship was canon it's not but that is what it was assumed to be confirmation that will was gay met with a lot of like positive support from fans however there were also fans saying that they were using byler as queer baiting which they do before it was even confirmed that Will was gay. They were using Byler for promotional material, which is textbook queer baiting, and so it got more people to watch the show, but then it was confirmed after the fact. Then, the volume two came out. In the time between volumes one and two was a mistake for a number of reasons. One, it didn't make sense to split it up. <laughs> I'm sorry, it doesn't make sense. The viewership wouldn't have gone down or up if it wasn't split up. It was mainly just for money. Like I said, Netflix wanted people to keep their subscriptions. And two, it left room for the fandom to take over. The fandom had so many theories between that time of one in, of volumes one and two dropping of what the last two episodes would contain. And some of the theories were actually incredibly well thought out and well written and very cool if that was what would have happened, but it didn't. The Duffers also hinted that, that some major characters would be dying. So people were stressing for five weeks that it would be like certain characters that would die, which also led to a different breed of bickering within the fandom. The split between the two volumes did not stop fans from doing it to netflix when the show dropped i think it was like at 3 a.m est that 
Netflix crashed. Like the servers crashed because it was overloaded. The season had over 1.352 billion hours of viewership in the first 28 days of it being released, which ended up coming second to Squid Game, which I think Squid Game was 1.6 billion. If you were on the internet during this time, you probably know about the cult of Eddie or the Eddie Munson effect. Um, Eddie Munson was a new character played by Joseph Quinn in season four. And he was kind of this like outcast, long hair, listen to rock music, play D&D emo-esque person and considered like the town freak of Hawkins. He was like the devil kid because he was emo, which is a real thing that happened in the 80s, by the way. It was a very real phenomenon that happened in the 80s and 90s that like if you were goth or alt or whatever, you were like associated with the devil and considered a Satanist. People saw themselves in Eddie as someone who like used to be that kid who was like considered weird, which is cool. Like you're able to see yourself in the characteristics of a character. And those fans weren't the ones who were the issue. You know who I'm talking about. Like the type of Eddie Munson fans that I'm talking about were insufferable. They were everywhere. I couldn't scroll on my For You page for a single day without seeing an Eddie Munson edit. And then he died? Forget about it. I, you like didn't hear the fucking end of it after volume two came out of season four. On top of that, you had a birth of a new ship, which was Steve and Eddie, and then turned into another shipping war <laughs> between if Steve belonged with Eddie or Nancy. Just like never stop. Every fandom has a shipping war of some kind. I make the joke in the video and I'm kind of mad that I did it. It's very interesting that both characters named Eddie are the ones that died. Crazy coinky dinky things, you know? You know? Okay, carry on. He also had the Chrissy Wake Up song that like went viral on TikTok for weeks and it was stuck in my head constantly all the time and I heard it everywhere. It was funny at first and then it just got annoying. It was taken way too far. Like most things on the internet do. Writing for season five began in August of 2022, a month after the season had been released. And it was announced that because of COVID, the Duffers were able to make an outline for season five before they even started shooting season four. So... They had an idea of like what would happen, and then in November it was announced that they would s that the first episode of season five would be called the crawl. Then we get into 2023. We're almost caught up. I promise. Year had begun, and it had begun with Noah Schnapp posting a TikTok that went viral pretty much immediately of him coming out as gay. That he, when he announced that Will was gay, it was met with so much support that he felt comfortable that he could come out like himself as queer, which is like the same level of support was given to him by the fans who were supportive of Will being confirmed as gay. And of course, the internet has their like trolls and shitty people that's just bound to happen. Um, but overall, the response from fans was pretty positive. When he came out as gay, not as a Zionist, we'll get to that. February 2023, it was announced that Welcome to Dairy was finally greenlit and that Andy would be directing multiple episodes, but not all of them, just most of them. And then in April, it was announced that the main cast was announced as well, as uh, consisting of Devin Adepo, Chris Chalk, Taylor Page, and James Ramar. Additionally, Steven Ryder joined the series as a series regular and Madeline Stowe as a recurring guest star. Filming then began in Toronto in May 2023, but then the worst happened. Another stopping point. May 2023, it was announced that the Writers Guild of America slash WGA would be going on strike. This ultimately put a pause on a lot of television production and films and development because writers, especially for TV, are on set. And so if you had a writer on set, you could not have filming happening. A lot of indie companies like A24 and Neon, however, were able to continue filming because they were meeting the demands that were being asked for by the unions. Stranger Things was put on pause in May when the strike started because the Duffers were still writing the fifth season and also the Duffers are both members of the WGA, so even if they weren't even if the scripts were done, I think they would be considered crossing a picket line because they're union members, so. Welcome to Derry did not pause production until July when SAG went on strike, which is the Screen Actors Guild of America, in solidarity with the WGA, but they were also negotiating their own terms. It had to do a lot with royalties from streaming services and protections against AI, which were the same things 
front that the WGA was also fighting for. The WGA strike ended in October of 2023, but SAG remained on strike because they still had not struck a deal. So that meant productions were still on pause. So yeah, the writers are good, but the actors weren't. So like the only thing that really came back was like late night television. The SAG strike, however, did not end until December of 2023. And most productions did start back up almost immediately. We're now caught up. It's 2024. But before anyone could gain any excitement about the new season of Stranger Things filming and a whole lot of people connected to Stranger Things told on themselves. Video went viral of Noah Schnapp excitingly handing out Zionism is sexy stickers in New York and was immediately called out. And I believe since the video has been deleted and in place of it was a very shitty apology clearly curated by his PR team and as well as the Stranger Things PR team because filming was about to like production was about to pick up again. And he also wasn't the only one. Brett Gelman, I think to this day, has been posting extreme Zionist Zionist takes on social media and has yet to say anything about them. But on top of the both of them, the Duffer Brothers and director Sean Levy were part of the hundreds of public figures that signed that document in support of Israel. And it is here that I want to take a moment to remind you that being anti-Zionist does not equate to anti-Semitism. Just gonna leave it at that. And if you disagree and attempt to sound off in the comments, they will be deleted and you will be blocked from this channel. I do not tolerate Zionism and I do not tolerate anti-Semitism in my comments as well as homophobia and racism. If you are going to do that, you can leave. You can go. You are not welcome here. Goodbye. A table read happened not too long after all of that occurred and uh, there was a full cast photo that was posted and then filming followed shortly after. Someone leaked that on set, members of the cast were being told to stay away from Noah by their PR teams unless cameras were rolling. And it was alleged that Noah had a emotional breakdown because he was being isolated on set that required therapists to be present on set. Which like, I'm not saying that it's a good thing that someone had an emotional breakdown. He did, however, paint himself as a very specific person in public that he was proud to display. And if people don't want to associate with you because of that that's really just the consequences of your actions filming has pretty much gone on all year they officially started in january and they have yet to wrap nine full months of shooting was something that millie bobby brown said and just recently this past month in october finn wolfhard said that they were almost done filming and as of now it is slated to come out next year in 2025 while stranger things began to pick up as did Welcome to Derry. It was announced in 2024 of this year that Bill Skarsgård would be reprising his role as Pennywise in the series, and he would also be a executive producer on the show as well. It was also reported that filming had wrapped for Welcome to Derry this past August with the original cast members that were announced the year previously, and it is now slated to come out in Max in 2025 as well. 2025 is going to be another period of time where the It and Stranger Things fandom will intersect probably for the last and final time time. Welcome to Dairy is going to be a one-off season and this is the last season of Stranger Things that is coming out. I'm going to be so real with you when I say this. I do not plan on watching either of them. Fandoms have been dead for a very, very long time. Between the pandemic and the strike and all the controversy, it just kind of like killed them. Crossover fandom especially has been dead since 2019. Like it, it hasn't lived to see the day since then. I honestly just don't care about it as much as I used to. Back in like 2016 to 2019, it was like one of the main fandoms that I was a part of. It became a hyper fixation for me. Stranger Things though was something that kind of died off after season three. I didn't like it anymore. <laughs> I Like I watched season four. I was not like over hyped for it in the way that I was for seasons one and two. I think it's just the way season three was it just kind of like separated me from it a little bit you can make your own decisions but i'm just saying me personally i don't feel comfortable supporting a production that is in support of certain views with people that are attached to it if anything i will yo ho yo ho yo ho it's a pirate's life for me for both of them so that is everything for the it and stranger things crossover fandom wasn't going to include like the 2020s in here just because like the crossover part of the fandom died in 2019 but it would f- it felt incomplete to not include the two this was really just for like reminiscent purposes it was really cool to look through some like old it and losers club stuff please do not take my personal views to heart just because i hold a view that's different than yours does not mean i am personally attacking you i also had gained access to my fandom account that i had 
Um, and I archived everything. So everything's still in there. Maybe that's a separate video for another time of me going through my old fandom account from middle school to high school. There's some embarrassing shit in there. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe if I am that low for content, I will expose myself that way. But not really looking forward to it. Unless we hit like a crazy goal of like like 50k or some shit. Like something crazy. You know what I mean? That's all for me. There are more videos to come. I've been saying it for months that I will be doing a Marauders video. I am. It's taking me a lot more time than I wanted it to just because I'm putting a lot of work into it and the script is I think 60 pages right now. This took me th fucking two and a half hours to film, almost three hours to film but yeah thank you for watching i greatly appreciate you all of my social media links are down below where they usually are as well as some other links to help aid everyone in gaza i think i'm going to be able to say it beforehand so if you are of age go vote this year it's very important and remember to like and subscribe and all of that fun jazz do something nice for yourself today remember you are loved especially by me and i will see you guys in the next one bye bye